and here we are in my messy shop once again. Today's project I'm going to try and organize this mess around the lathe. You see I made some decisions years ago which I haven't changed. I have random drawers here and there and some random things stuck here and there. And this is just an old set of drawers that was uh, left over from the client job. And I try to organize this set but I don't do very well. So I'm going to put one clean drawer underneath the lathe because that's where I need to reach most often while I'm working. And here I'm using an old piece of oak that I have, which is considerably bent, but I think I'll be able to use short enough pieces to get that bend out. And so here I am making sure I'm going to have at least three sides in oak and one side in walnut. And I'm going to finger join everything together. And there I am making sure those three are the exact same size, trimming the top and bottom with my new saw stop. And that last piece there is walnut. It's the only piece of wall that I have left in the shop, and I'm going to use those two pieces together as reference to make sure all three are the same length. And now I'm using my delta planer. This is a delta planer I've had for maybe 20 years. And somehow to avoid snipe, I kind of put them in at a little bit of an angle. You see that angle that's happening there. And then also put them in together. That helps. And now this one board it has to become the same thickness as all the others. And there I am, just pushing it through. And once I got the walnut plank to the right size, everything else went through that last thickness, and now they're all the same. And uh, what you see here is the box joint blade I'm going to use, and my inserts, and then my regular saw blade, which I'll use for box joints as well. And this is my box joint jig. The interesting thing about this is I use it for the thick blade and then also the regular curved blade. And I just move my guides over. And you can see I have these stoppers, so every time I make a cut, I move it over. These stoppers are just sort of friction fit. I pop them out when I need them, depending upon which position I'm in. And in this video, I'm going to use both positions. Right now, I'm going to start with the quarter inch position. And I'm going to move over the guides into the positions next to them. And then use the actual curve for the, th the thin blade for a second set of boxes that I make. And here you go. I'm just cutting and cutting and cutting. The most important thing now is because I'm cutting them individually, sometimes people cut them in pairs, um, it's important that I know where the top of each side is so that they all puzzle together facing in the right direction and that's why I put the blue tape on them so that I know each side is the face up side. And uh, it's just a matter of how you start on your box jig, whether it's going to be right over the hole or right next to the stopper. And there's lots of great videos on box joint jigs, which is how I learned, basically. And there you go. And those are all my joints, and they fit together perfectly. Of course, it took some time off camera to make sure that the joints fit perfectly. And there's some scrap that I used to achieve that. And I'm just using it for my glue up, just to get the glue in the joints, deep inside the joints. And they tap together. It's pretty critical when you are gluing up a finger joint set like this that you don't leave it without clamps for too long because it will start to set up. There's just so much glue surface area which is why the joint is so strong. And if you don't tie it down or nail it down fast enough, you might start to set before you really need to be where you need to be. And just check my diagonals and, and I'm square. And now I'm cutting a pocket for what's going to be the bottom of the drawer which is going to be half inch plywood. The reason I'm doing this so overkill is because everything in it is going to accumulate to be a lot of weight, maybe 70, 80 pounds. And I want to make sure that everything is strong. And now, after taking several small bites, I got to the depth I need to be, which is a half inch. And there's my scrap, just to check. And now I'm going to cut the square that is going to become the bottom of this drawer. And I just cut to the square, but now I need to accommodate for the curve and the router bit. And this is the way I would just give myself that mark. Transferring a piece of tape. Just cut with an X-Acto knife. And I put that on all four corners and I just sand it off using the sander there. And you can see I've used the tape on all the corners and that was just a scrap piece that was left over from the first cutout. And it fits perfectly. And those bows are all sort of faced in in the early part when those planks of oak will curve to have them all curved in so that uh, the slight curve now is pressed against the center of the each side of the bottom of the drawer which will then straighten it out. So glue and 
Small gauge nails will keep it in place. Whenever I do finger joints, I always let them stick out a little bit. I think that's a pretty uh, common practice. And then you sand them in so that it's nice and tight. And then I'm just using a sanding block. I think I have 80 grit on that sanding block just to soften the corner so they're not super sharp. This lathe table was made by somebody years and years ago. It wasn't me. And there's angle iron underneath it. So I need to put a drawer underneath that, but I'm going to have to put it inside of its own box. And you'll see what I'm doing here. Those are the sides of what's going to become the box that the drawer will hang inside of. And you'll see my, my guides there or my, my full extension rail slides. The drawer is going to pull completely out and this is going to be the top. And again, since everything's going to be heavy, I have to make sure everything's going to be able to withstand the, the accumulated weight of all those metal parts. And so here you see me uh, nailing the top to those sides. So what I do is I glue them and then I air nail them and then I screw them. It just makes the workflow go a little bit easier. And you see my buddy Willie there is, is my helper on this job cleaning. Well, he's not being needed. He cleans and he never stops. And so there you go. And uh, I pre-drill everything just to make sure that the head sinks and that I don't split anything. And so that's what I'm pre-drilling. And uh, I'm using two inch screws. You got to think kind of go in reverse. Like think of where all the weak links might be. Where's going to be the one spot that could potentially fail? if there's going to be a hundred pounds of steel hanging inside of this drawer. And just to make things look a little sexy, that's a piece of ePay. I have a lot of scrap from a job that was done during the summer. So that's ePay. It's going to be the nose of this drawer. Also because it's going to be in a situation where there's a lot banging around and that ePay is very strong. So some wood glue and some and nails keep it together. So now we're getting to kind of see what this is going to look like. There's walnut, ipe, and oak, and maple plywood all mixed together there. And now I'm installing my sliders, and the sliders go in there. And I'm using most of the available screw holes. Sometimes I see these drawers fail a lot because people only use two screw holes on either side of the sliders. And now I have the draw positioned sitting inside of its box there. And so it's easy for me to put the, the sliders that go on the drawer there. And so I put as many screws as I can and then I remove the drawer completely from the, the rails. I call them sliders and rails interchangeably. And I put as many screws as I can in that as well. And I wanted the rails, I'm kind of installing these untraditionally. I wanted them to be tucked back so you don't see them right at the front of the drawer there. So they're stuck back. So that's why they hang off the back of the drawer a little bit. But this is my workshop application. This isn't a situation where people will scrutinize it. I am the client here. And so now I'm drilling holes. And this gets a little tricky. Because I have to go up past the angle iron that's inside there, I need to build another stage that's about an inch and a half high. And because there's some bolts hanging down from in there, i got to move this stage in a little bit from the edge. And it'll become clear what I'm doing when you see me install it. And those big holes I just put in are going to be the space by which I'm able to reach up and screw through that three-quarter inch piece right there. And there's the scrap I had inside there. And so I'm pre-drilling those holes because what I'll do then is put two inch screws into those holes so when I'm ready to screw it in they'll all be there and available for me to just drive home. And again just added strength everything gets screwed. Now I'm painting it. It's a coat of polyurethane to keep all the greasy fingerprints off it. And now I'm making boxes. These boxes are going to help organize the inside of the drawer. And this is a bunch of sycamore, I think is what it is. I'm not sure because where I got it, the person didn't know what it was called. And some of my friends looked at it and they think it's sycamore. That is the species of the wood. And so I'm now making small box joints and each one of these is going to be a three by six inch box. And so here's my box joint jig now set up for the regular curved blade. I moved those rails over and changed out the, the stopper. 
to the thin stopper. And you'll notice the quarter inch slot is there, but it's just not being used. And uh, these smaller pieces are a little bit harder to handle because I was doing them in stacks of five. And there you go. And now I assemble the boxes. And that chunk of steel right there helps me just hammer on. And then also like the, the pile of glue goes on the chunk of steel and then it just scrapes right off. And so I made enough wood to make exactly 10 boxes. And ultimately you'll see I'll need more boxes because the drawer ends up being rather large in relationship to the space that just those 10 boxes take up. And I tap them all together and then I bang in the bottoms. I let them dry for a couple hours and then I put the bottoms in. And then I followed up later with a, a little tiny pin nail in the bottom and a couple of sides, a couple on each side. And now I'm sanding the boxes. I'm just sanding off those finger joints that stuck out a little longer. And there's Dave in the background. And this is from my buddy Tony Ralu, this stamper. I just had it in the torch for a little while and it had enough heat to do about eight boxes in a row. And here is the installation. I got to remove all this old stuff. I put these pieces up years ago, just the snap decision because I needed to accumulate junk right there at the lathe. You know, the hand tools I use the most, and then it just becomes a junk drawer. <laughs> as, a, as, as I'm sure the one I'm building will also become a junk drawer in time. It's very, it takes a lot of discipline to keep this stuff clean. And you'll notice under my lathe there needs a lot of reorganization, and that's what Willie starts to tell me right now. And you can see the this available space for that stage. And Willie's helping me, and he's yelling at me, why aren't we cleaning up the whole bottom? And I said, in time, in time. And there you'll see where I'm able to put those screws through up into the deck there. And there it is. And that's how I'm able to get that drawer hanging from a uneven, unplanned space. And here comes the drawer. I'm able to slide the drawer right into it. I could have put a bottom on it, but it would have made it a little bit more difficult to install. And it doesn't really need a bottom. The drawer hangs just like it would hang from underneath the desk. And there it is. I have a lot of room in there. And put my name on it, of course. And I gave it a second coat of polyurethane. That's why you see some fingerprints on it, because the paint wasn't totally dry. And there I, I had already filled it with all my stuff. And here you go. My clean drawer. And that is most of the stuff I grab when I'm running a job. And that's why it needs to be right there at my fingertips, so to speak. And this is just some small stuff Taylor's been working on. But what's nice is that you could put the important bits you need right there on that sort of makeshift shelf at the top of the drawer. And when you cut small parts like this, you end up piling them everywhere. And I could put them in the drawer or on the edge of the drawer there. Thank you for watching.